welcome back to another taste test. This is episode eight and we're doing something a little different today. We're trying mixes and matcha products. Like we've got some chocolate here, we have snacks, we have lattes, we have a concentrate. So it's gonna be a little different, but these are just things that I've received and also just seen at the store that I wanted to review for you guys. Before we get into that, I wanna make a little announcement in case you haven't seen already that my matcha brand Froth is now officially live. I have it right here. We have two different varieties of matcha available. I will be doing a taste test video of my own matchas to explain a little bit the difference between the two varieties that we're offering. But if you haven't already, you can follow us on Instagram at froth and you can check out the website frothmatcha.com. This has been a long time in the works. I wanna say over six years in the making because this idea came to me when I actually still lived in New York and it's just now coming to fruition, but I'm so excited and I couldn't be more happy to bring you matcha that feels like the matcha that I grew up drinking with. It's the experience of being able to connect with my grandma through tea. And as you guys know, the goal of this and all my content has always been to help everyone enjoy really good matcha. So that's the goal with froth too. And I honestly cannot believe it's here. That being said, I also wanna make it very clear that the reviews and the content are gonna stay the same. Just because I now own a matcha brand does not mean that I won't be promoting other matcha brands that are equally good and share that with you. I want everyone to enjoy good matcha and I'm always gonna be honest about that no matter what. So without further ado, let's get started with today's taste test video. All right, we are starting off with a drink. This one's actually been around for a long time. I remember seeing it, I think in glass bottles when I lived in New York. So at least six years old. Before we get any further into this taste test, I just wanna put it out there that we're not really gonna be ranking quality today because when it comes to mixed products, I generally tend to assume that the quality of the matcha and the price of the matcha that you're using is slightly on the more moderate end. Reason being when you mix it with other things, matcha doesn't really retain its color quite so well. There's a reason why basically it's so difficult to formulate a product that stays just as vibrant and fresh. Like I think the dream is that you're able to bottle up a fresh matcha latte, but at this point in time, I don't believe anyone's done it quite yet. And there's a reason why we prep it fresh in the moment. It's kind of like the difference between a bottled coffee versus like a freshly ground espresso. But even then, I don't think the difference is as drastic as it is with matcha that's pre-prepared like this. Same goes with food products. Just when you're adding matcha to any other ingredients and letting it sit like that, it's not preserved the best. And also when you're storing matcha in liquid, like a water of some kind, it's just really, really difficult for it not to oxidize and not lose its flavor, color, and vibrancy and all of that goodness. So expectations going into this video are honestly quite low because I know it's so difficult and that's that's why I don't typically go for these things usually. We're gonna throw that out there because as you can see from the color of this one, it's not looking so hot and there's a reason for that. So first up, we're trying the Pop and Bottle Matcha Green Tea Almond Latte. This is a vegan, plant-powered, no refined sugar drink. It's got almond milk, dates, green tea, and matcha, which is actually very interesting, green tea and matcha, vanilla extract, spirulina, and Himalayan pink salt. These are about four bucks per bottle and it says shake, 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 keep refrigerated, so. Ooh, this one has like a very marine-like smell to it. I think part of that is that they actually added spirulina, which is very interesting because criticism of matcha tends to be that, oh, it's so fishy, it's so, you know, marine-like, it smells like seaweed. This one actually kind of does, but it also smells sweet. So let's give it a try. Whoa. Yeah, it kind of looks like I'm drinking coffee. What you're seeing on camera is real life. This is... Anyway, like I said, it's just truly so difficult to make a matcha product that is pre-prepared and also really good. So here we go. What I'm tasting primarily is actually dates. I don't really taste the matcha at all. I do taste the vanilla. I'm not gonna lie, it's not terrible tasting as a drink itself because it tastes like date milk, which, and I love medjool dates, dates are great. But I don't taste the matcha at all. So I would say this drink is more about the caffeine maybe. Like I think that would be a great reason to have this, but if you're expecting something that tastes like matcha, this wouldn't be it. Surprisingly low, like pretty smooth. There are no clumps or anything like settling at the bottom, which I don't know how they did that. Maybe that's why they added green tea and matcha. A lot tastier than I expected, honestly. If you like dates, I think you'll like this, but also I think you could just make date milk at home. From a matcha perspective, I wouldn't say that this is your best bet for that experience, but very, very cute branding and better than I expected. Would I buy this again? Probably not personally, but I think this would be good for somebody who needs something on the go that's just like a tasty drink that has caffeine. Next up, we have another drink. This one is a Taika matcha latte with adaptogens and macadamia milk, zero sugar. I hope it's not artificial sweeteners. It definitely is. <laughs> yeah, erythritol, we've got monk fruit. Interesting that we have erythritol and monk fruit in here. I love that it's macadamia milk based, so I think that's kind of nice and special. And this is definitely one of those like functional 
beverages, which I tend not to be a fan of usually. This one is about $5 per can. And I think I've tried it before, but it was quite a long time ago. Like I think the packaging even looked different. So we're gonna just try it fresh. Like I've never tried it before. Other ingredients that are in here that are kind of interesting. We've got ceremonial grade matcha. It actually says that. Pea protein, Taika creative blend, which seems to be just like adaptogens. We got ashwagandha and lion's mane. And then just some other like stabilizers and gums, which you kind of honestly need for a drink like this because matcha is powder suspended into water. And of course that settles naturally over time. So I think we're gonna have to shake this too. And I'm really curious to see what the color of this looks like inside, but I will disclaim that I'm not, whoa. Okay, cool. Let's smell it. I'm not sure what I'm smelling. I'm trying to figure out like what it is that I'm smelling. The smell? It's, oh no! And there's like clumps on the table too. I'm not having good luck with this one. The smell is fishy, but also a little sweet. Like when people say that matcha smells or tastes fishy to them, I don't usually understand that. I've never felt that way, but this definitely has an element of that. It could be the pea protein actually. Pea protein is tough to make taste good. So I'm shocked that it's in here. The other thing too, is it only has two grams of protein. So I wonder if it's in there for stabilization. I don't really know. Here's the color. Take a gander. I think what's interesting about this one is it does have like gums and fillers and stabilizers, but there are some noticeable clumps, not even of matcha, but almost like coagulated milk kind of, like plant milk. Let's give it a try. It tastes a lot better than it smells, but in a weird way, it kind of tastes watery. Like it's not quite creamy at all to me. It tastes like when you add too much water to your matcha latte kind of. I don't really taste matcha at all. I like that it's less sweet than the previous drink that we just tried, but then you do get that artificial flavor aftertaste, which I'm not a fan of. I think I'm just also the worst candidate possible to try this drink because I'm not a fan of adaptogens mixed into my beverages. I prefer to just have them as supplements or on their own. And I'm not a fan of artificial sweeteners. I think it's important to say when it comes to matcha, if you're looking to reap the nutritional benefits of it or like, you know, the antioxidants and the L-theanine and the catechins, your best bet is to just go for a higher quality matcha because the higher the quality of the matcha, the more the nutrients are retained. We've talked about this a lot in previous videos, but I would say that's your best bet if you're really going for like the functional aspect. I think this could be convenient if it's got everything in one, but personally, I'd probably prefer to take like a supplement blend instead of drinking this. I think this is kind of like the zero sugar alternative to what we just tried earlier. So similar concept, if you just kind of want a drink that's got some caffeine in it, this is probably for you, but not for me personally. Ooh, I've been so excited to try this one because I saw it and I thought it was really interesting. The tube concept, I actually think it's very beautiful. I'm gonna say the packaging, I am a sucker for. Gorgeous. Aesthetics, 10 out of 10. But we are here to judge what's inside of this package today. This is the Autonomy Smart Matcha Latte with matcha, macadamia, cashew, lion's mane, and cordyceps. So seeing a similar theme here, I feel like a lot of the pre-made matcha mixes and lattes out there are all like functional with added adaptogens, which I think is very interesting. Directions say, pour eight ounces of hot water in a blender or use a frother. So we're gonna do it with hot water today. This does contain monk fruit extract. And it doesn't say that it's ceremonial grade or anything like that, but it does say it's a smart creamer and matcha. So the vibe I'm getting is kind of similar to like that layered superfood product, which I've seen. I'm guessing like MCT oils and stuff like that, which I do believe are in here. Yeah, coconut oil. Let's try it out. How much do I use of this? A tablespoon and a half. Okay, let's look at the color. You know, compared to the other two drinks that we've just tried today, the color is not as bad as I expected it to be. The texture of this is almost like paint, like a thick paint. It's glossy. It's definitely kind of goopy. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it clearly from where you are, but also forgot to mention that this is $28 a tube, which gives you seven to 10 servings. So about 280 per serving or per latte. We're just going to eyeball. Oh, it's kind of giving like nut butter actually. Color is really not as bad compared to the other things we've tried today. Honestly, I'm not saying it's good, but it's better, better than I expected. Smell. Let's give it a smell. It smells a little sweet and it kind of smells like a matcha baked good or like a matcha dough almost like bread maybe here we go we've got some hot water and we're gonna froth now we have our blended latte the color is definitely leaning like yellow brown but the problem is it's got added ingredients so it's really hard to judge it looked better before i added the water and whisked it in terms of color the smell is not terrible it kind of smells a little sweet in the clumps there are a few at the bottom it's kind of like when you have homemade nut milk i feel like sometimes you get a little sediment at the bottom but let's give it a try oh that's really strange. I actually really don't taste much at all. It's like a light sweetness, very, very watery. And I don't think I even added the full amount of water you're supposed to use, so I can't imagine it with more water. It feels very watered down and light. I don't taste the matcha. I do taste a hint of nuttiness, but I wish it had more flavor. So maybe if I prepared this for myself, I might add more of the concentrate, probably a personal preference thing. 
but very liquidy. It doesn't feel like a creamy latte to me personally. I do love the idea. I feel like the idea is there and I wish that it was something that worked, but probably not something that I would buy again. I am obsessed with the branding though. Like just very, very cute. I love the color palette. Here we have the Ohm Superfood Mushroom Blend Matcha Latte. Supports focus, immunity, balance, and it's a green tea matcha blend with lion's mane, reishi, chaga, turkey tail, and tulsi. So we got a lot of supplements in here or a lot of adaptogens, I guess I should say. Add one packet to eight ounces of hot water or your favorite milk and stir well. Let's follow the directions. We're going to stir. Interesting things we've got in here, rice hull powder. We've got monk fruit extract. I mean, I think this is pretty nutritious as far as like the adaptions go. And I really like that. But the interesting thing about adaptions too, is they do have quite an earthy flavor on their own. Like if you've ever tried just pure ashwagandha or whatever, it's pretty earthy and matcha can also be kind of earthy. So when you're mixing it together, it's just like, I personally prefer adaptogens, just like take it on its own, not into my treats to kind of like destroy them. You know what I mean? But we will try it. And this comes out to a little under $2 per packet, one serving per pack, very handy. Woof, don't inhale too deeply when you open this one. I don't smell too much. Kind of just smells like earthy and a little sweet. I definitely smell sweetness. So I'm a little worried. I feel like the monk fruit is gonna be strong in this one. We'll just add it straight to the cup. Feels like a lot of powder. A lot of hot water. They're all kind of similar in color in terms of the kind of brownness. But again, it's just so hard to judge because there's so many things added to this. It's not just matcha really. And we are gonna stir and then we'll try it also frothed. This feels like I'm drinking Swiss Miss. I don't know if you guys ever used to drink like the hot chocolate packs and you just end up with these big chunks of powder. We're gonna go ahead and froth because I don't think I'm doing so well with just stirring. Wow. This color is very brown. Okay. Let's give it a smell. You know, it smells better now that the hot water is added to it. It kind of smells like burnt toast, but not in a bad way. I actually really like that smell. So, but earthy, I'm smelling earthy. So that's what I'm expecting. Here we go. Whoa, <laughs> that is crazy sweet. <laughs> I know it's not like real sugar, but that's crazy sweet. That's the first thing I taste actually. I'm not tasting matcha really at all. Yeah, it's just really sweet. I just kind of feel like I'm having a bunch of monk fruit and there is definitely a lot settling at the bottom. So it's been pretty difficult to get it nicely incorporated into the water. I think if you like monk fruit, you might like this, but for me, it's going to be a pass. <laughs> we have another adaptogenic matcha latte. This one also with mushrooms. We've got lion's mane and cordyceps. It's the wooden spoon herbs, mushroom vanilla matcha latte. This one comes in a single serving packet, much smaller than the one that we just tried. What do we got in here? Oat milk powder, maple syrup powder, MCT coconut oil powder powder and natural flavors. So simpler ingredient list. Oh, I'm struggling today. Color is mm, kind of reminds me of like the Costco matcha. Like it actually does have a green hue to it, which is not something I can say about most of the matchas that we've tried today. It's not giving the right color of green, but for something with added ingredients like adaptogens, not terrible, like much better than I expected. Smell. It smells like the Costco matcha. It's kind of got like this fishy, grassy matcha smell, like kind of the matcha that they use at a lot of like bubble tea shops, that kind of smell. And like adding the water, it is giving green. Not the right green, but it is giving green. So that's kind of exciting. What does it say about preparation? Add hot or cold water, stir to dissolve and drink. Well, we'll try stirring again, but I do see some clumps that look like they're gonna be hard to get rid of already. Yeah, we're gonna need to froth this. <laughs> Here we go. The bar has been set so low today that this actually looks like a decent color compared to what we've tried. It smells sweeter now that it's whisked. Kind of smells like a protein shake, you know, like a vanilla protein shake. And strangely doesn't really taste like anything, actually. It smells like more than what it tastes like, but honestly, kind of tastes like just water. Oh, I'm surprised. Yeah, I really don't taste anything. I think my biggest critique of all these adaptogenic matcha lattes is like they all say creamy, but they all end up tasting very watery. I know you can mix it with milk, but it's interesting because this one does have like oat milk powder and some of them have like coconut milk powder. I'm like, why can't we make them more creamy? Do we need to add more milk powder or what is it? It's definitely not giving creamy. Like you can see the water is pretty translucent or you can actually kind of see through it. So it's not offensive because you don't taste anything really at all, but I'm surprised that it's basically feels like drinking water. Renewed chaga matcha. I'm actually really excited because I remember the chaga chino being so popular. I'm not a coffee drinker, so I've never tried that, but I think it's like a mix that you mix with coffee if I'm not wrong. And a lot of my friends really loved it. Like even my younger sister loved chaga chinos. So we are gonna now try the matcha version, which is a mushroom matcha mix, supercharged, claims to be a stress reliever, immune support, clean energy, focus supporting, endurance elevating. I mean, it's another adaptogenic matcha. We've got ceremonial grade matcha, they are claiming that, wild forged chaga, cacao, Ceylon cinnamon, 
Mung Fruit Sweetener and Love. That's really cute. I do love this branding. I think it's very sweet and cute and just fun and playful. We've got Monk Fruit in here and really nothing other than what they've mentioned except for erythritol, which is also added. I don't really like erythritol. I find it to be very overwhelmingly sweet usually. And again, so interesting that there's a mix of erythritol and Monk Fruit, but we're going in with an open mind. This one says to mix it whisk it or stir or froth with hot water, one to two ounces. I'm not gonna subject my whisk to that, so we're gonna use the frother. And it says one to two ounces of hot water and then you add your milk of choice. So it is supposed to be enjoyed as a latte. There's no milk powder in here. And I think what's really stand out about this one and the chocochino is that it's the combination of like the chocolate and the cinnamon with the cacao added. So it's got its own flavor. It's not just adaptogens and matcha. It's supposed to be like a finished drink. With that in mind, I also am hoping it tastes really good. It's a little grainy when I look at it, but I think that might be like sugar crystals or the monk fruit crystals. It kind of smells like amazing grass greens powder that I used to consume. Like it's got this like greens powder smell to it, not necessarily matcha. As we've seen today, the flavor of things can change drastically when water is added. So let's give her a shot. Big scoop. It is green. It does read green, but adding the hot water and it's kind of, it should be dark. There is cacao powder in this, so I'm not expecting anything Super vivid, let's whisk or froth. Let's give her a sniff. Mostly what I smell is cinnamon. All right, we're gonna turn this into an iced latte. I like that this one tells you to add milk. Man, this color. Shockingly, not as sweet as I was expecting because it smelled really sweet. All I taste is cinnamon, actually. But so far, out of all the mixed drinks that we've had to try, I think this is the best tasting. I just taste cinnamon, not too much fake sweetness. Wish I could taste the cacao a little bit more. And I definitely don't taste any matcha, but a nice little sweet cinnamon moment, and that's kind of it. <laughs> My friend Kendall gave me this clever matcha super latte mix. Pretty big bag, actually. It says, just add water, adaptions, mushrooms, and super creamer. So ingredient-wise, we've got ceremonial grade organic matcha, a super creamer, which is oat milk based and coconut cream based, ashwagandha, reishi, and lion's mane, and probiotics, which are supposedly heat resistant and plant based. So that's actually pretty interesting because I wonder how they achieved that. We've got monk fruit added to this and erythritol too. So interesting. I guess it's a common combination. I have no idea. Oof. This smells like coconut. I really smell the coconut. That's the first thing I smell. And really the only thing I smell actually. This might be the creamiest one that we tried today. Let's see. We were supposed to add about three tablespoons, which is a pretty big serving, I feel. Six to eight ounces of water. We're gonna eyeball here. It's about a tablespoon and a half. That's quite a lot. It is reading a little yellow green, but it is green compared to what we tried today. All right, let's froth it up. This one feels extra clumpy, like the powder feels thicker. So I have a feeling I'm not gonna be able to get it completely smooth, but we will try our best. Definitely stays kind of clumpy, so that's tricky. This one's also kind of giving sort of clear translucent, which is interesting, because it has a lot of that coconut milk powder. And still smells primarily like coconut milk. It tastes like coconut milk. <laughs> I think it just kind of tastes like a coconut milk dessert. The matcha is not really coming through at all. And neither are the adaptogens, which is kind of nice, because those don't taste the best to me, but I think this could be enjoyable if you like coconut milk. I guess it's a functional coconut milk beverage. Matcha wise though, wouldn't say tastes much like it, which is surprising. It almost kind of tastes like pandan in a weird way because it's got this like heavy coconut, lightly sweet. Ooh, just got a clump in my mouth. Not the most unpleasant, honestly. Could I drink it if I had to? Yeah, I could. Probably wouldn't buy it again, but dare I say, out of all of the drink mixes that we've tried today, I think this one is the best tasting. I actually am not a big coconut fan, usually, because it's just so overplayed with vegan things, like everything is coconut based. But this one actually has like that natural sweetness and is also the creamiest out of all the lattes that we've tried today. Best of the bunch, although I wouldn't say I've really loved any of them so far. To finish off the video today, we have snacks and food to try. And I have actually tried all of these before and they're all Pretty good, so I'm very excited. We're ending on a high note. Let's start off with the Pockets Chocolates Matcha Covered Almonds. This is made with an oat milk base, so it's kind of like a vegan white chocolate coating, and it's actually a really delicious snack. I remember I got a sample from my friend a couple years ago, and the ingredients are fairly simple. There is monk fruit in this one, but this actually surprised me because when I tried it, I had no idea, and I, I actually really enjoyed it. This is an AAPI owned brand, no mention of like ceremonial grade or not, but it does say no added color and always less sugar. I feel like that's very typical of an Asian snack because the best compliment in Asian culture for a dessert is like, oh, it's not too sweet. We prefer something a little bit more balanced. These, I have had them before, but they remind me of like those Jordan almonds, just a really nice chocolate covered almond. Smells not like much, little hint of green tea, but smells kind of nutty. 
Yeah, these are really good. And these are definitely not the highest quality of matcha. Like, you know, I'm not judging this based on the color being super vibrant or anything, but you do taste the matcha. Kind of reminds me of a matcha Kit Kat, like that white chocolate matcha taste. And with the almonds, delicious. Not too sweet, actually creamy in the mouth. These are delicious. I've only tried this flavor from the brand, but I would now be interested in trying the other flavors that they carry because this one is genuinely so good. The matcha flavor is not as strong as it could be, but I like it. This is the Mezcla Puff Crispy Bar. It's a protein bar, and this is the Japanese matcha vanilla flavor with pea protein, pumpkin seeds, and quinoa. I have tried this before, but I haven't had this flavor for a couple years now. They've got some really delicious flavors. It's not the highest in protein. It's got 10 grams of protein, but it's not bad for a bar like this because it's actually quite delicious. This is more of like a dessert bar than a true protein bar, I would say. But for that reason, it also tastes better. I remember feeling like this one didn't really taste very matcha-like, which I'm not surprised by because this is what the color looks like. It's just kind of barely green. It's kind of in the glaze, I believe. And then the base is a vegan white chocolate coating. Oh, let's smell it. Doesn't smell the most pleasant, but I've tried it and I liked it before, so. I think I actually taste the pumpkin seeds quite a bit, like that earthy flavor. And then I taste the white chocolate. I don't really taste matcha much at all. I personally think I actually prefer from this brand the chocolate peanut flavor. That one's really good. This one's not bad, I could eat it for sure, but if you gave this to me and didn't tell me that there was matcha in it, I probably wouldn't even detect it really. That being said, I love the white chocolate coating on the bottom, actually quite good and pretty rare to see with vegan protein bars. But yeah, more than anything, I kind of taste the pumpkin seed more, like a little bit of like that deep earthiness. Not bad, I probably wouldn't buy this flavor again. I would buy their other flavors though and I do actually regularly buy the chocolate peanut ones. I have had this and it's delicious, but we're gonna try it together. The Nekohama Oishi Omakase Matcha Chocolate. So I love Oishi berries as well. I've had them there, especially grown and I feel like they're very similar to Nekohama in the sense that they really put a lot of care and thought into their products and they really do care about quality. I've eaten this as I've said, but we are gonna try it again together. This one uses a vegan white chocolate, which is actually rice milk based, kind of rare. I feel like these days you see a lot of oat milk based vegan chocolates. Simple ingredients, literally cocoa butter, cane sugar, rice milk powder, matcha powder, and strawberry. And these strawberries are freaking delicious. I believe they use leftover or kind of imperfect strawberries from Oishi and then freeze dry them. So I actually really love that this makes use of something that would typically go to waste. And right off the bat, the color of this is pretty lovely. When you're mixing matcha with other products, it's very common for the color to kind of disappear entirely and turn into like this swampy green, but this color is actually very nice. Smells like chocolate. Mmm, actually smells really good. Smells more like a regular actual chocolate versus a white chocolate, which is so interesting. I wonder if that's because of the earthiness of the matcha. Mmm, I don't smell the strawberry, but you can see the little bits in there. It's kind of crushed up, so you get like pieces throughout every single bite. Let's try. This tastes like a strawberry matcha latte, and it's really not that sweet. Like, honestly, I think my grandma would like this because you really taste the matcha. I also love that you kind of get the bite of the strawberry seeds in there a little. Yeah, that's really nice. This one costs about $17 if you buy it from their site. And they have other flavors. I wish I could try the croissant crispy one they have, but I don't believe it's vegan because of the croissant. But this is really good. I actually think the strawberries are the perfect complement for this one because the matcha flavor is so present. And that's really, really rare. This reminds me more of desserts that you would get in Japan made with matcha where you can actually taste the matcha and they lean into it instead of trying to like sweeten it and just throw like a touch in there. If you actually like matcha, I think you'll like this a lot. Last but not least today, we are trying the Cho Matcha Oat Milk Latte Perfect Matcha. Oh, it's a pun, perfect matcha. It's a strawberry matcha latte chocolate bar that's vegan and made with premium Uji matcha, it says. Uji is kind of like known as the capital or the most well-known place to get matcha. And it has a very distinct flavor profile when you drink Uji matcha. So I think it'll actually show up nicely in chocolate or something that's sweetened. And this is a collaboration with Third Culture, which I think is a bakery in San Francisco, if I'm not wrong. Ingredients look pretty minimal as well. We've got cocoa butter, oat flour, cashew butter, freeze-dried strawberries, matcha, coconut oil, and sea salt, and sunflower lecithin. Let's try this. This comes in individual bars, which I kind of really like. I saw this on Instagram. I think a friend sent it to me. And so I ordered it for the both of us. Oh, pretty. Quite a nice green color. I think when it comes to white chocolate and matcha mixing together, it's hard to get it like a deep, deep color. So this actually looks pretty decent. I'm very impressed. And cute little three piece separation. It's giving Kit Kat a little bit. The inside has a strawberry filling as well as some bits of strawberry. So I feel like it's got strawberry white chocolate plus crunchy bits. Doesn't smell like much actually. It smells a little waxy. Let's try. Mm. Oh wow. This one is heavier on the white chocolate flavor than the Nekohama bar. You don't taste the matcha coming through quite as much. I primarily taste white chocolate and even the strawberry tastes like a uh, strawberry white chocolate. Mm. So it is very different in flavor. Definitely not bad. I really actually enjoy this because 
I haven't had white chocolate in a really long time since going vegan. I would recommend this if you prefer something on the sweeter side and a Nekohama one if you prefer something that actually tastes more like matcha. I wish that the matcha came through just a little bit more because it's kind of sweet for me, but Overall, delicious. Yeah, I would eat this again. In summary, a lot of what I had today was pretty disappointing, but I think my expectations were already kind of low. I was pleasantly surprised by how drinkable some of the products were because there was virtually no flavor. I would say the standout ones to me in the drink category, the best tasting one was probably the Clever Matcha Latte, but that's because it tasted just like coconut milk and actually had flavor, was fairly creamy, not too sweet. I think the least enjoyable one today that I had was the Taika canned latte. That one just really had all the wrong things going on. I think it was incredibly sweet, yet also bitter and tasted kind of bad. On the food front though, I think we actually did pretty good. I enjoyed almost everything that I ate. I am a purchaser of the chocolate matcha almonds. I really like those. Also love the Nekohama chocolate as well as the chill chocolate. The only one that I really didn't love was the Mezcla bar, but I do love their other flavors. So I think the matcha one just isn't as strong as their other flavors. I am a purchaser of the chocolate peanut bar because I've been seeing that one pop up a lot more these days. So it's just like a nice convenient snack. I think I got it on my last flight home from New York, but all in all, I think when it comes to matcha snacks and ready products like that, it's so difficult to make a good one for the reasons that I explained in the beginning of the video. Your best bet usually is to make these things at home and the same can be done with lattes. If you really wanna make an adaptogenic matcha latte at home, you absolutely can. As somebody who really enjoys matcha, I always look to actually taste the matcha when it's in something. So if you share the same sentiment, I don't think that matcha flavored products out there are quite there yet. But also in my opinion, I think most really high quality matcha is almost kind of a waste to mix with other things. So let me know if you like this video, if you'd like to see more. These aren't things that I typically buy, but I happen to have a lot around. We will be coming back with the next video being another matcha, true matcha taste test video. But if you enjoyed this one, let me know in the comments. And as always, if you haven't already, download the free matcha ebook guide for all things matcha. You can follow me at Matcha Mommy and you can check out the matcha that we've just launched now at froth or frothmatcha.com. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in another one soon. Bye.